I'm Grant M. Fletcher, creator of Seeing Sounds Visuals. As a tool visuals designer for over a decade, I've worked with Ellie Goulding, Hillsong United, Passion Conference, and more. Seeing Sounds is a resource for the local church where you can get your hands on visuals to click, loops, and a few surprises of the same caliber that I would create for my clients. Today, we're jumping into a project file I first created way back in 2016 for a Rise conference. Since then, it's had a few iterations and you might have seen it here or there online, most recently as a part of the Mother's Day at Home pack at seeingsoundsvisuals.com. Join me in a little peek behind the curtain and a quick dip into After Effects. First off, I went, I want to have kind of a sophisticated kind of paint look, so I'm going to look for a sophisticated kind of painter. So after doing some searching around, I found this dude, Ambro Ambrosius, what is it? Ambrosius Beauchert? Ambrosius... Ambrosius Beauchert. Anyway, the dude's Flemish, uh, obviously a baller. So you jump into images. Whenever I Google images, I go straight to tools and select usage rights labeled for reuse. Just that way, I know I'm not gonna get in trouble if I use anything. And sure, you're gonna wanna find something that's of a decent size as well. So I found a couple of images that I like. And what I'm really looking for here is something that I can cut around in Photoshop. I'm just crudely cutting around them, but that's boring. I'm not gonna show you that. Uh, and then you kind of end up with all these flowers, you know, different colors, different sizes, some of them really tiny, but it's not gonna be that much of a problem. So we load up After Effects and I'm gonna load these in as layers uh, instead of just one PSD. I've individually keyframed these layers with the position and the rotation so they're falling. So now it needs to start in black or uh, in nothing and then go all the way through the screen until again there's nothing at the end. Uh, I then took that layer, flowers one, and I brought it into another comp and I added some more of these rotating flowers just to save myself some time. So I'm just trying to layer them up um, but not have it look exactly the same as last time. And you can do that as many times as you want. There's easy ways to do that as well. You could, for example, flip or rotate it. You know, if I straight away, that now looks like more images if I staggered it. So, you know, save yourself some time for goodness sake. So another thing I've done with the individual layers is try to line them up into a color palette. Now, it doesn't matter if that's not the one that I'm gonna end up with. It just matters that if I'm going with one color that they're all close together. So I've scrolled these all around to this kind of pinkish hue. Then when I came into this next pre-comp, I changed my mind and decided to go blue. So you've got this adjustment layer here with the hue and saturation on it and also the vibrance, just taking out some of that saturation and boosting the vibrance instead. I'm very big believer in pre-comps upon pre-comps upon pre-comps. Now I've again staggered all these up, which are the pre-comps that you just saw, so that you've got an even longer 30 second loop. So now I can bring that pre-comp in here. Now I've looped it by splitting it in the middle, but I'll show you how to do loops another day. Now we start getting into looking at the actual look and textures of it. So there's an inverted vignette on here only because I was gonna have lyrics in the middle of the screen. So we can kind of ignore that for now. Uh, there's curves adjustment in there again to push a little bit more blue and um, like take some of that highlight off of it because it just it was a little bit too punchy if you're going to put lyrics over it. But then we look at this texture layer that I've just built. So in my stills folder, I've got some textures that I found on the Schminternet. Here's just some paint. That's cool, right? Here's some kind of cracked, kind of paint dried kind of look. And here's an actual canvas. So it's got that canvas kind of texture. So now those are three things I can use. Now I've put them all into one layer here, layered them on top of white, just so that now when I go into the next comp, the black is the only thing that shows through if I use multiply. And I've backed that off a little bit to not make it too overpowering. I've also layered that paint texture onto the background again, just to really sell that look. Um, but if you look without the texture on top, without these cracks on top, it doesn't quite, blend everything together. You really wanna try and shove everything into kind of a 2D looking layer. So the more you can put stuff on the very top of the layer, the, the better it is. When you wanna make something 3D, you put things in between the layers that are gonna differentiate them. So that's really as basic as it gets in this case. I've used real photos of paintings. I've used real photos of paint textures. And from there, it just becomes being creative. 
Another loop I have here has a paintbrush transition in it and I've got two of those. I bought them, you know, way back when, but they're really useful and these ones in particular look quite good. You can get some that look pretty trash. So they're really useful for transitions on and off and also just in this case, it just wipes across the screen. In here, this is kind of more of a fly through the screen, but I've got a layer here that is literally paint strokes flying towards the camera. Uh, and I made that by taking photos of paint strokes that I painted you know, on a piece of paper and then just literally took photos with my iPhone and brought them into the computer. And then I can take a texture like that that I've made myself and overlay it on top of something else to make it look a little bit more frantic, which um, there is that strokes loop on top here. Um, if I just solo that, you can see it's kind of opaque in there, but it's there. I've got it twice. Once I've probably rotated it or something. Yeah, there you go. So like they're not exactly on top of each other. They're probably also out of time just to make it look a little bit more layered. In the background of this fly through is that actual fly through that I showed you before, just in a blue color. So that's kind of showing through there really subtly because this background is, is uh, covering most of that up. 80% there, the background has a little gradient ramp. So then you can start to layer up your paint textures that are stills, turn some paint textures into video loops, either by exporting them beforehand or doing them in pre-comps. And you can start to really control this paint look. Um, so lots of different ways of doing it. I made lots of loops in this pack. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of this project. I will hopefully be doing more of these. If you want to buy the final loops for this, it's available at seeingsoundsvisuals.com. It's a part of a new Mother's Day loop pack. If you're watching this before Mother's Day, uh, it's a part of the Who You Say I Am pack. And it's also a part of the Ultimate Loop Pack where you can buy every loop on that site in one tidy little package. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully I'm gonna get better at these. If there's anything you wanna see, give me a heads up in the comments below. Peace.